Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My parents were over here all day. We got this house completely finished with all the painting. We painted the laundry room, the master bedroom, the guest bedroom slash my office, and the master bathroom. And so it's been a busy, busy day. I do not have a freezer meal that I can just throw in the oven to have dinner, plus it's already 6.30, and Josh and I are hungry, so we need to have a meal quickly. So I figured, since we're gonna do meals of the week, the theme of this week is gonna be fast food on the homestead because we need to get dinner on the table quickly. So before I went and ran up to take a shower, I just prepped a couple things. Let me show you what we prepped. We are gonna make spaghetti. So I got some of the ingredients out to make homemade spaghetti. And I put two onions in a Dutch oven, just on low, 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 low. And I had these sauteing with a little bit of our garlic infused olive oil while I took a shower. And I also put a pot of water on to boil. We are gonna have this pasta sauce done by the time the noodles take to boil and they take 11 minutes to boil. In our Dutch oven, we're gonna add our home canned beef. This is one of the things I'm excited about having this home canned meat on my pantry shelf. This canned beef is 100% cooked. This is the first time we're cooking with it together. And the cool thing about it is it's already thawed and it's already pre-cooked. I buy all my meat in bulk and it's always frozen. So if I don't think ahead and have meat thawed, then whipping together a meal can take a little bit longer. So I'm excited to try this canned meat because we did it together and I haven't tried it yet. And we're gonna see how it goes. But for convenience, I already know it's a lot easier. I wanna show you this really cool trick I saw on Instagram. You got your pasta out of the bag, no need for scissors. To our pasta sauce, we're gonna add some red chili flakes, homegrown oregano, homegrown basil, the rest of the garlic powder I have. We're gonna saute that for just a minute. The pan is getting a little bit dark. I don't want it that dark quite yet. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red wine and just deglaze the pan with the red wine. I'm gonna add just a little bit more to get the rest of that fond off the bottom. Normally when I make spaghetti, I add two quarts of my pasta, or this is just crushed tomatoes. But because we're in a little bit of a hurry and I don't have time for this to cook down, we're gonna add one can of tomato paste and one quart of the crushed tomatoes. And the reason I didn't want to totally put all the red wine we're gonna put in here so far is because when you're using tomato paste, it does taste better if you cook it a little bit on the pan and you brown it a little bit, it caramelizes the sugars and the tomatoes and it just adds a really good depth of flavor. So I didn't want it to be too liquidy in the bottom of this pan. I wanted to cook off that red wine. I made sure that red wine deglazed the bottom of the pan like we wanted, but it also is going to draw off the moisture of that wine pretty quickly so that we can cook our tomato paste. That tomato paste has built another fond on the bottom of the pan. So we added about a half a cup of red wine to that. I'm gonna turn the heat up and I'm gonna cook this red wine out. If you wanna get a lot of flavor in a short amount of time with a really quick sauce, start cooking with wine. If you don't cook with wine very often, it can really boost the flavor. I just buy a cheap bottle of wine, red and white, and I try to keep one in my refrigerator at all times. A lot of times what I do if I open a bottle of wine and I don't really like it, that becomes my cooking wine. Or I just go buy a four or five dollar bottle of red and white and I try to keep that on hand at all times because it really intensifies and just makes anything you cook taste so, so, so good. So rich, makes it taste like you worked on that for hours and hours and hours. Now that we've cooked out that red wine, we're gonna add the tomato sauce. And I'm gonna add some cream. The pasta's done, I just have it straining. We're gonna add our last ingredient, which is some Parmesan cheese. I have probably about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. This is my favorite go-to pasta sauce recipe. It's rich, it's flavorful, it's easy, and it's absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna let that cheese melt in. We're gonna give it a taste test. I did add a little bit of salt when we were cooking down those onions while I was in the shower. I haven't added any pepper yet though. 
I can't find my black pepper, so we're just gonna leave it out since we put in those red pepper flakes. Let's give it a try now that the cheese has melted. That is a winner, winner chicken dinner. Even though it's not chicken, we're gonna add all of our pasta. Josh and I like a really saucy pasta. I did slightly undercook my pasta because I'm gonna let it cook in this red sauce in the pot. It'll help absorb up that flavor of the sauce. Let me tell you, this sauce is not your average mama's pasta sauce. This is incredible. Between the red wine, the caramelized onions, the Parmesan cheese and the cream. This is gonna bring your average Tuesday night spaghetti to a whole new level. I hope you guys give this a try. I'm gonna try it again because it has that ground beef in it. And so I wanna really try that ground beef and just see how we like it. I know the flavor is really good, but I wanna kinda of see what the texture is like. That's delicious. That is incredible. I know canning beef or canning meat is a little bit weird of a concept and it was for me for a really long time. Looks a little bit weird in the jar, but to have pre-cooked, pre-thawed meat in my pantry that I can pull out and whip together a meal like this, this came together in less than 11 minutes because the pasta, I didn't cook it. I think I cooked it for nine minutes and I finished the cooking process in the pasta sauce. So if I can do this in a short amount of time, so can you. You can elevate your average spaghetti to something that your family is going to ask and crave. It's so good. Now, I'm not making a side. This is dinner tonight. It's already 7 o'clock, and I haven't been grocery shopping in over a month. So my fresh produce, I only have celery in my um, refrigerator. I have green beans or frozen broccoli and things I could get out, but I just don't have the energy today after painting. But let me tell you, this week is a busy, busy week. There are going to be Instapot meals, some Crock-Pot meals, some really fast stovetop meals. I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing, but everything that we're gonna be cooking for dinner has got to be done quickly this week. So we'll see you back in the kitchen next time we're cooking up some food. Hey friends, now I am in the middle of a really big cooking day. Just a second, I'm gonna turn this Instapot off. And I, we're making fresh pasta. We just took a cake out of the oven. We have some pickled eggs here that we've been working on. So I need a really quick dinner and I am running very, very low on produce and groceries at my house because I haven't been grocery shopping in over a month. But I do have celery, that's only fresh food. I've got, oh I got onions too, and I also have frozen peppers. So what we're gonna make today is jambalaya in the Instant Pot. So in here I have some of our garlic infused oil we made. So traditionally jambalaya is made with andouille sausage, but Josh and I really love these pineapple sausages from Costco. And they add a really good sweetness to the jambalaya because I'll add some spice with some of our seasonings. We really like the contrast of these sweet sausages with the spices that I'm gonna add. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice up, or cut in rings actually, one package of this sausage. I wanna get some color on these sausages. While those are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and slice up our celery. This is already washed. Now we're gonna cut up two red onions. last year, so I'm going to add some of those. We're going to add our celery and our onions. Peppers, onions, and celery are the holy trinity, and we now have that in our Instapot. We're going to let this saute for probably five minutes or so, 
and I probably have another I'm gonna be in the kitchen till late this evening it's three o'clock right now and that's why I wanted to get dinner going so that when I get hungry and when Josh gets hungry it will be ready for us and this is gonna make enough so we'll have leftovers so I won't have to cook this weekend because we have a very very busy weekend we have two parties we're going to this weekend so it'll be nice just to have lunch or food ready for us whenever we're hungry so we're gonna let this cook for probably five minutes get the onions and peppers and everything soft and then we're gonna add our spices I'm gonna add the next few ingredients we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of tomato paste and I'm gonna let that saute now we're gonna add the seasonings I have some homegrown parsley some salt maybe a little more black pepper a few garlic cloves maybe a whole head of garlic I don't know <laughs> paprika some red pepper flakes a couple bay leaves some Tabasco sauce this adds a nice vinegar flavor The liquid has cooked out, ooh, sorry, steamy. The liquid has cooked out of these vegetables and that's what exactly what I want. I want that tomato paste and the spices to saute for a little bit to help increase their flavor. So we're gonna saute that for about a minute. Now we're gonna add some red wine. I would add white, but I don't have any open. And I don't feel like opening a bottle for this. So we're just gonna add some red wine to that. Let that cook down. The wine is cooked down, so we're gonna add the last few ingredients. I have three cups of rice, one pint of homegrown, home canned, crushed tomatoes, and I just splash that all over myself. Mix that together. Three cups of chicken broth. This is the chicken broth that I strained from the chicken. And now I'm gonna gently fold in, this is pre-cooked chicken that we can together. And I have to tell you, I'm loving having home canned meat on the shelf because it makes things like this really easy. I did not have to cook this chicken in order to have jambalaya. I'm going to gently fold this in because this chicken is already very tender and I don't want to break it up anymore. So I'm just going to gently fold it in so that it's evenly distributed throughout the jambalaya. Now traditional jambalaya has shrimp in it as well. I do have shrimp in the freezer but I it's not our favorite thing and I don't really have the time to thaw it and cook that as well. So we're just gonna leave the shrimp out. I'm gonna set this over on the counter over there. We're gonna put our Instapot lid on, make sure the vent is closed and we're gonna put this on manual for three minutes. And that was dinner. Because I am in the kitchen doing a lot of other projects, there was a couple of minutes where the vegetables were sauteing, we were browning the sausage. So there was a little bit of time that I could work on getting ready and working on my other kitchen projects. But overall, this probably only took me 10 minutes of my actual time between the chopping and sauteing, maybe 15, because I did have to get out quite a few spices and put those spices away. But overall, very, very easy. Now this is kind of sometimes a gamble because I'm never 100% sure on my liquid to rice ratio. I think that we did a good job on this time, so I think it's gonna come out nice and light and fluffy. We do have a couple more garnishy things we're gonna put on the top when this is done, and I'll show you what that looks like when our jambalaya is done. All right, it is done. So let's take a look, moment of truth. I'm gonna give that a stir and a taste test. One thing's for sure, it sure smells good. You just have to see if the rice is cooked all the way through. I don't think this rice is cooked all the way through. Not even a little bit. There's not very much liquid left in here, so I'm gonna add about a cup of water. I was worried that I was gonna add too much liquid and it was gonna be mushy. And so maybe we'll just add the rest of that. So that was almost two cups of water. Maybe that was too much, I don't know. But I need, I know I need liquid in here in order for this Instapot to work or it's gonna give me the burn signal. So I think because that rice is about half cooked, we're gonna do it again. I haven't done this in a long time in the Instapot. I normally do it on the stove. So now that I'm doing it and we're recording it, we're gonna know for future reference how long this should take to cook. All right, we're gonna let that go for another three minutes. I just checked it and I just put another five minutes on because it is still not done. It's okay though, we have three tables of pasta done 
and this island of pasta. So even though our jambalaya is not done for dinner, at least progress is being made in the kitchen. We finally got this jambalaya cooked all the way through. Pretty excited about that. I don't think I initially started out with enough liquid. I typically make this recipe on the stove, and so it tastes really good. It's a little bit kind of thicker. Usually the rice pieces are a little bit more individually, you know, pieced, but it tastes really good. And I'm gonna show you how I like to finish off our jambalaya. Because there's a good amount of spice in this jambalaya, it really helps to have a little bit of fresh lemon juice and that just makes it oh so good. I went out into the garden last night and I picked a bunch of fresh greens and goodies and radishes. But I think for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna top it with some of this fresh cilantro, some fresh chives. And just to make it pretty, we'll put some of these chive flowers on there. That'll add a little texture and a little bit of color. And that is our dinner tonight. Life has been extremely busy today and I need something fast and easy for dinner. So I have two pasties, or pasties. I have two pasties here that we made with my mother-in-law. So I have a video and a recipe for this I can link down in the description box. My mother-in-law is from the UP, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and this is kind of a traditional dish there. And so they are filled with vegetables. They have carrots and onions, potatoes, and parsnips in them. And these are pre-cooked, so all we have to do is warm them up. And this is gonna be dinner tonight. I have the oven preheated to 375 degrees. These need to cook all the way through. I had them in the refrigerator all day. I took them out of the freezer this morning and we're gonna put them, oh, I'm missing. I took this out yesterday because we made a souffle together and now we need it back in our top oven, the one that's preheated. Those will probably take a good 35 minutes to cook because they still are a little bit frozen on the inside. All right, so what I've done, Josh is home now, but he's not quite ready to eat yet. So I've turned the oven off. I put a piece of foil on so they're nice and they'll just stay nice and warm in there and they're perfect. They smell fantastic. You can serve them just like this. You can serve them with ketchup. You can eat them however you want. And that is dinner tonight. So we'll see you guys next time we're in the kitchen. Hey friends, happy Monday. It is dinner time and we are gonna whip together something really easy. This is the Kung Pao chicken that we did in the freezer meal together. And it's in a new style that I've never done before. So we are going to cook it together for the first time. This is one of those recipes I made for my sister-in-law and she said she's cooked it up and it cooked up great. So we're gonna cook that Kung Pao chicken and we have some white rice in the rice cooker that's already done. And then I have some green beans from the garden from last year. I believe these are the last of last year's green beans, which is pretty exciting that we're using those up. I have some white rice here. And then I still have not gone grocery shopping in about six weeks. We're gonna be doing that this week because I only have celery and I did find some carrots in the fridge that are still perfectly good. So I peeled these up, I washed them. We're gonna roast these. And then these are from the garden. We're gonna do a quick pickle on these radishes. Over the weekend, we had two parties, Saturday and Sunday. We had a graduation party for my brother-in-law where we made a birthday cake or a graduation cake. And that took all day and was really nice. And then on Sunday, my sister had a big barbecue at her house. So I didn't have to do any cooking this weekend. Uh, I did make a baked oatmeal, I should say, I guess for Josh so that he has breakfast. And then we've just been eating leftovers. So it's gonna be nice to go ahead today to have something new in the fridge. Whenever I roast carrots, I like to cut them on a bias. I have the oven preheating to 415 degrees. I never liked cooked carrots. Uh, for as long as I can remember. And then Kim from the Wads, she would cook and roast her carrots all the time. 
And I thought that looks so good. I love roasted broccoli, roasted cauliflower, roasted almost any other vegetable. I'm like why wouldn't I like roasted carrots? And I do like roasted carrots. So ever since I started watching her make her roast carrots, I've started roasting carrots. And I love them. So we're gonna get these carrots on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. So I also want to go ahead and roast up an onion since I have an onion too. That'll just add some good sweetness and some color to our roasted veggies. This is our garlic avocado oil, seasoned salt. And this is gochugaru, which is a Korean red pepper flake that's sweet. It's not super spicy, it's delicious. I can link this. I need to order some more because I've gone through it so quickly. It's so, so good. head into the oven. They're probably going to take 20 minutes to bake. They're going to get golden brown and just absolutely something you want to eat. So we have our radishes here. I'm going to do this quick pickle throughout the year. So in this little container, I'm going to add a little bit of sugar and salt and I'll reuse this brine a couple times. We're going to add some white wine vinegar and I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of these Korean red pepper flakes and now we're gonna just cut our radishes as thin as we can these add just the absolute best crunch to things they add a nice little freshness they're so good you could cut these as thick or as thin as you want Josh just got home, I can hear his car in the garage. So all I'm gonna do is put a lid on this container and shake it just to help the salt and sugar dissolve. And that is a little side salad garnish that we're gonna put on tonight's dinner. But like I said, I'm gonna continue to use this brine. So as radishes come in from the garden, I'll just keep adding radishes to this. Now that we have it made and it makes it really easy, you can put this on something like tonight, like this Asian dish. You could put it on tacos, that's my favorite way. Salads, whatever you want, and these will keep in your refrigerator for months and months and months. It won't last that long, but in our house, but it's a really nice garnish to have in the fridge. I wanna show you the three components of this Kung Pao chicken, so you can kinda of understand how it works if you didn't see the video. Right here is a bag of cut up chicken that is in, I think it's just cornstarch. We have our peanuts, and here is our Kung Pao sauce. Everything in it is already in it, and all we have to do is cook the chicken, put the sauce in until it thickens, and we'll garnish with the peanuts. And it should be that easy as long as I probably did everything correctly. So I have two pans here. I have the pan that we're gonna cook our Kung Pao chicken in. I have both of these pans have a little bit of our garlic oil. This pan is the pan we're gonna cook our green beans in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those warming up. While we're waiting for our pans to heat up, I did wanna mention I made extra rice because I want to make stuffed cabbage, which uses leftover cooked rice. So I thought that if I made the rice today, I could put the leftover rice in the fridge. And then either tomorrow or the next day, when I make the stuffed cabbage, one step is already done. And I did already get the ground beef out for that, so it will be thawed and ready for us when we make that meal. So both of my pans are hot, because I put my spoon in here and it's sizzling. So here's where we're gonna cook the chicken. Our chicken is here. I'm going to try to have this cook and release from the bottom of the pan because it is sticking and then hopefully when it releases I'll be able to flip it over. I am a little worried about it but we'll see how it turns out. The roasted veggies are done. Let me show you what they look like. Oh shoot. I'm going to leave them in the oven with the oven turned off just so they stay nice and warm. This chicken smells so good already, even though it's kind of sticking. So I think this is gonna turn out really well. 
green beans are frying up nicely. I've got a couple other ingredients we're going to add to the green beans once they get cooked a little bit more. Our chicken is fully cooked through, so we're going to add our Kung Pao sauce. Hopefully that will help deglaze the pan a little bit. And there is some cornstarch in there, so it should thicken up nicely. I'm hoping we can get this pan to deglaze a little bit. I was just thinking I should clarify, this is my mom's Kung Pao chicken recipe, and what I did was I used that other lady's, the other bloggers, I can't remember her name, but I will link her down below, her technique on how to package up freezer meals, but I used my mom's recipe, if that makes sense. So I know this sauce and everything tastes good, it's just, I don't know about the, that cornstarch, it's stuck to the bottom, we need to taste the chicken to see how the texture is, but because the cornstarch wasn't dry on the chicken it was moist because it had sat and thawed in the fridge i think that's why it had a hard time sticking to the chicken and not sticking to the pan but i'm no expert i don't know our sauce is boiling nicely so we need to taste this i was able to scrape up quite a bit of the stuff from the bottom of the pan and then here these are nice and they're getting scalded which is how i like my green beans i like them oh that pan is getting a little bit dark there so i'm gonna turn the pan down I'm going to add just a splash of water to help deglaze the pan. Last time we made green beans, we added this roasted red chili paste, and it was so good. So I'm going to add that again. And then we also added this grated ginger, and this was so, so good. So we're going to add a couple spoonfuls of this. We're going to fry that up and get that all cooked together. And then we haven't added any salt so I'm going to add just a little bit of seasoned salt. The last thing we're going to add to our Kung Pao chicken is some peanuts and I did crush them just a little bit so they weren't all whole. So stir that in. I wish you could smell it in here. It smells fantastic. I'm going to take this off the heat. I'm going to turn the heat off these. These are done. I want to give this Kung Pao chicken a try. This was always a really special meal when my mom would make Kung Pao chicken. It was not something she'd make on a Tuesday or a Monday night like we are today. And so that is one thing. If you prep something like this, you can have a really fancy, nice, elaborate meal that doesn't take time. It's 6.19 right now, and I started in the kitchen at 6 o'clock. So we haven't even been in the kitchen for 20 minutes, and we basically have this beautiful meal pulled together. So let's give this a try. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That is so good. Savory, rich, delicious. I think how I'm gonna make this meal, this Kung Pao chicken meal again, I'll make it freezer meal friendly, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna keep the sauce separate from the chicken, because when I usually do freezer meals and I make chicken, I usually throw the marinade in with the chicken. But that's not how you cook this recipe. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the sauce separate, I'll cube the chicken and put the chicken in a Ziploc bag and have those two things separate. When I thaw the chicken, I will then put that chicken in the cornstarch. So it's already gonna be cubed for me, it'll be thawed, and I think that will make it not stick so much to the pan. But I'm telling you friends, this is so good. With the carrots and the onions that we have roasted, our green beans, our rice, delicious. Mm. I need to call Josh down. In that second bite, I got a peanut and it was so good. So good. Oh, and these are beautiful. Perfect. I like my roasted vegetables nice and roasty toasty. All right, Josh just got down here. And so Josh, we have rice, roasted carrots and onions, ginger, chili paste, green beans, some quick pickled radishes from the garden, and Kung Pao chicken. It looks awesome. And it smells really, really good. Good. I'm so hungry. Josh is going to go ahead and dish up dinner, and so am I. We're going to sit down and enjoy a beautiful dinner together. Thank you guys so much, friends, for hanging out with me this week as we put together these really quick and fast and easy and delicious dinners. And I'm going to film that. You can go ahead and get your food, Josh. I don't want to disrupt your flow. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. And, uh, I am going to go ahead and film making the stuffed cabbage rolls because if you guys have never had those, I did not eat those growing up and they are probably, you like stuffed cabbage, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. With the, 
the rice and so the good. yeah oh so josh when you package up our leftovers half that rice is for the stuffed cabbage rolls okay so don't go overboard yeah don't go overboard <laughs> with the rice so josh is the one who puts together lunches after dinner he takes care of all the cleanup and everything and putting together lunches and all that stuff so i don't have to worry about anything but if i don't give him special instructions like that then he doesn't know that half of that rice is for something else so i will film that for you guys if you guys enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up if you want to watch more of what we eat in a week or these like dinner meals i can put a playlist here or if you want to go watch garden videos i can put some down here thanks again for hanging out with me and i can't wait to see you guys next time bye friends